Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new episode here at ASAN. I know it's been a hot minute since we did our last video, but as always, we've been super busy here at the garden. We started up our intensive classes this last weekend. And as a matter of fact, the group that came through was the very first group that started with me back in 2018. So they actually graduated and finished up their program this time around, which is very exciting. And we had a lot of really fun projects in the workshop this weekend. So, you know, it's always a blast hanging out with those guys. And I only get to see them a couple times a year, but they always bring great material and we always have a lot of fun in the workshop. Now today we've got a very special tree that we're going to be working on in this episode and I have a good friend of mine from Norway, Tobias, who's actually going to be here to help me out with the project. So before he gets here, I'll take a little spin around the garden with you guys here so you can see what's new in the nursery and then we're going to jump into the workshop and get started on this major project. So this tree right behind me here is an Itoigawa Shinpaku Juniper. I actually styled this tree for the very first episode of Bonsai U back at the beginning of 2021 when we launched the online platform. So you can see the tree's really grown in since that first episode and it's been repotted in a new container actually. So it was brought in by its owner, I guess about two or three months ago here for me to style up and kind of rebuild a little bit. So that's what we've been doing recently and the tree's actually gonna get picked up today by the owner as well as several other trees in the nursery that I'll show you here in just a second. So it's always a sad day of course to see plants like this leave the garden but they're going back to their rightful home and as a matter of fact, the owner is gonna bring some other the really cool trees into the nursery for me to style up so it's gonna be a fun day I think. So this tree here is also another juniper that's owned by that same client and it's also getting picked up today which Again, sad to see it leave the garden, but it's been fun to have it here in the nursery for the last few months. This is a very challenging tree because the foliage is very soft, which typically makes it easier to work with, but this is so soft that it's actually quite hard to wire. So to build pads like this on the tree takes a lot of effort and a lot of time, really figuring out what to remove, how to wire, you know, how far out to go on the branch, how to set those branches. So my goal with this plant was to create kind of a soft Bunjin style or Bunjin-esque style. So I wanted a lot of lift on the undersides of the pads. So, you know, doing that with this type of foliage again is very difficult. It requires you to wire all the way to the ends, sort of scoop the foliage with the wire and then provide that lift. But I think it turned out pretty good and hopefully when the client arrives today to see it, they will agree with me as well. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. Excellent. Ready to get started? Ish, yes. Ish, all right. Yes. Let's get into it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> All right, so the tree that we're gonna be working on in this episode today is this Japanese white pine right here. So the thing about this plant is that it has a pretty special history. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with a big bonsai collector in Japan named Daizo Iwasaki. He owned the Takasago-an bonsai collection down in Ehime Prefecture on Shikoku Island. He was a huge bonsai collector, made a lot of his money, or all of his money really, through pachinko parlors, which are these sort of Japanese pinball gambling machines. Ended up becoming very wealthy off of that and built a really beautiful bonsai garden down in Ehime. Well, this tree was part of his collection down there. And one of my good buddies, Russell Martin from Brussels Bonsai Nursery, happened to be in Japan buying trees a number of years ago and became very good friends with Daizo Iwasaki. And Daizo actually gave him, gifted him this tree right here. So we now have it in the workshop this week. We're gonna be restyling the plant, getting it all cleaned up, dialed back in, and transforming it back to its former glory. So super excited about diving into this work. I think it's gonna transform into a pretty cool looking tree. So the first step in getting this tree back to its former glory is to clean out a lot of the old needles. So we're going through and just plucking out any old needles that are existing between the new clusters of needles that have formed this year. 
So in total, we'll probably end up taking off somewhere in the neighborhood of about 25% of the foliar mass on the tree, plus whatever branches we cut off to change the design of the plant. But this is totally normal this time of year, kind of late summer going into early fall to start this process. So perfect timing to have this tree in the garden. So a number of years ago, before Daizo Iwasaki passed away, he put together a photo album of his bonsai collection at Takasago An Bonsai Nursery down in Ehime. So I actually got a copy of this book from a good friend of mine, Kathy Shainer, who's a bonsai professional here in the United States. She gifted this book to me and flipping through the pages, you can see Daizo Iwasaki's love for Japanese white pine or goyomatsu bonsai throughout the pages of the book. So it's really inspiring to look at this and also work on a tree from his collection, kind of following the guidelines of how he designed plants and applying that to this tree here at Ace AM. All right, so while Tobias is finishing cleaning up the old needles on the tree, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the design of the plant. So this tree has obviously been a bonsai for a very, very long time. And a lot of the branches have outgrown the desired profile of the tree. As a matter of fact, they're getting so long that they're making the big, powerful trunk feel pretty weak and spindly. So in order to fix that, what we're gonna be doing is removing some of the lower branches on the plant to compress the tree in and pull everything from the top down to make it a much tighter profile. So I'd been debating with the owner of this tree whether or not we should take off the directional primary branch on the left-hand side. And after thinking a little bit more about it, I think it's probably not a good idea to take the whole branch off, but we are gonna be reducing it significantly. But on the right-hand side of the tree, there's this very big, straight, heavy branch that is not gonna be easy to manipulate and pull down, and it's really long. So we're gonna lop that guy off and rebuild the tree by, again, compressing the branches from the top. So I think this is gonna build a much more powerful and compact tree that's gonna make a much bigger mark on people when they see it in person. All right, the moment of truth. Ready? Let's do it. Is this the right branch to buy? Uh. <laughs> That's about my favorite. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's turn it back to the front. Turn the tree this way. That's the back. That's the back. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, that looks much better already. Super good. And then this will be the other one. Yeah. Much better, I think. It really opens the front of the tree up significantly more so you can see the big, powerful trunk but it doesn't feel too open and sparse like it's a weak tree. So I think this is a good balance in terms of major branches that need to come off. And like I said before, now that we can compress the top down, it's gonna make the trunk feel that much larger. So next step on the tree is gonna to be to wire everything, starting at the bottom and working our way towards the top. So in order to compress the look of the tree, we have to drop the lowest branches down, particularly on the right side, to compensate for the massive branch that we took off. So I went ahead and wired all the secondary and a few of the tertiary branches out here. And I put a guy wire on underneath here, connecting it to the gin that we just created out of that dead branch. 
So I'm gonna pull this from the bottom, crank it down a little bit into place and see if that doesn't compensate for the lack of foliage down in this area. Now the big problem here is that this branch actually has dead wood running down the length of it up here. So I can't really take it too far because it'll crack in half. So we're just gonna have to find that happy medium here. Alright, so as you can see, we finished up the white pine right behind me here. We've got it all padded out again, well balanced. We went through and removed a lot of very heavy tufts of foliage at the end that were much stronger in certain areas than other areas just to balance energy across the tree. And that's given the tree a much more sort of consistent density across the entire plant. So in looking at the photographs in Iwasaki Sun's book, he tended to, at least in the book anyway, like to have his white pines a little bit on the sparser side. So we thin this tree out quite significantly, sort of as an homage to how he used to style trees, or at least how his guys used to style trees. So it's really fun working on this project with Tobias. Thank you very much for helping me out. Uh, so we will see you guys next time around. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below. It helps us out tremendously here. And of course, until next time, take care.